Yeah. It is episode 84. Happy Masters Week. How exciting is that if you're a golf fan? And it looks like um, the weather's going to be fine. little chilly, which won't help the old people. And there's quite a few turtles out there. A lot of older people. But before we get into that, uh, returning from where? Seattle and Portland. Both shows sold out. Fun. Crazy fun crowds. And um, I went to this place called Hubert's with my cousin Tom and his friends. And they had a a Spanish coffee that was on fire on purpose. It wasn't what? on fire by accident. Yeah, I don't even know because we'd already had drinks before we got there. And we went to Pizza, Pizza Piazza Italia in the Pearl District downtown. Portland's got some funky-ass places, some very cool funky. And then a few places I was like, okay, I don't really know what's <laughs> going on here, but I'm going to scoot on back to that Marriott like the fastest <laughs> rabbit in town. Um, and Seattle... I just love Seattle. I always wish I had an extra day in Seattle, and I never do. Um, but do? thanks. In Seattle, I went to um, the market and uh, saw the fish, the throw, the guys that throw the fish. I'll never forget, my one brother took his kids down there, and they were little, and he told them they were going to go see all the fish, and then they got down there, and the one kid just burst into tears. He's like, nobody told me they were dead. Oh, he thought it was going to be like an aquarium, and then I thought, you just traumatize that kid forever. He's just looking at dead fish everywhere. <laughs> Um, and Michael Somerville was the opener and he's, he's a fun little drinker. So we went to Kells, uh, in the alley and had a lunch pint and had clam chowder at Athenia's, I think it's called. Um, yeah, you can see all the water and it's just, it's crowded, but never too crowded. And, um, it was just a wonderful weekend, like an easy travel wise driving up. And then I put a video of this car I saw at the gas station on the way from Portland to Seattle. Holy shit, Joe, go on my Instagram. I, I don't even know how the plastic is holding anything on. Like I would have been terrified to drive that thing anywhere. But, um, and speaking of the, the Northwest termites, um, I did not see Bigfoot, but I did get some stickers from some termites that came to the show. They brought me a lot of stuff. Truth be told. I did eat these potato chips, Tim's, salt and vinegar. Uh -huh. That's why it's empty. Delicious. <laughs> um, and then I gave Michael the other ones because um, he'll eat. I can't eat all that, but I did get it. It was from Lizanne, Debbie, and Pat, termites that have been listening and coming to Lloyd show, live shows and the podcast. And then they gave me all kinds of crazy stuff. Is This, this is the coolest beer can I've ever seen in my life, Black That's Raven. Cool. I just It's a Pilsner. It's what we're drinking. It's from... Somewhere up there. I can't find it. I can't read these small type letters, but Washington somewhere. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Woodenville. Wooden, wooden, yeah, I can't read the type. From Black Raven Brewing. Black Raven Brewing. Just a great can. I bet their merch is fantastic. And then they brought me this. It's in Redmond. And I got this home in one piece. Look at this gin bottle. Now, here's the thing, termites. I'm... Uh, gin and tonic always reminds me of one of my uncles because that's all he ever drank. I will drink one in the summer or so. It's like a treat drink. I'm not really a big gin drinker, but my friend Dory is. And my friend Dory's coming down for a work meeting and then going to go to Tanya Tucker. What? At the Ryman in Nashville. And Dory loves gin, so now I have... A, but I'm keeping the bottle. This is where I know I'm totally a borderline <laughs> alcoholic. I want to, it's the prettiest thing ever. This is like a work of art. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Just to have these... Like, it's just so pretty. Um, and they brought me some Johnny seasoning salt, which I've never had. Very nice. Delicious. I know. The ushers, when they bring stuff back, they're like, um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you be quiet. Don't judge. You lay that right there. That's seasoning salt and uh, stickers and gin. And don't you worry about what's in that thing. Because they're always like, do you want us to um, send this through security? I do not. I want you to leave it right here in the green room. And uh, you're welcome Bye. to have a potato chip. Hi, my name's Kathleen. Thank you. So, uh, then got home, turned the ship around, straight down to Augusta for the practice round on Monday, and I saw a tiger. Oh, did you coming and you thought you hated him? I never have been the biggest tiger fan. Um, I'm not, I won't talk too much about golf because there's a lot of people, but the Masters is a thing. I brought their potato chips. I've never had their barbecue. Here's the thing. It caught, people think you have to get. You can go on StubHub and go, I don't ever want to go to the real rounds because I can't see shit because I'm too short. Even Ron left. He's like, I'm six foot two and I couldn't see shit. He goes, I got on a plane and flew to South Carolina and watched the rest of it at a Hooters. And I was like, yeah, unless you get there like, if, you know, the crack of dawn and then you got to run. 
people are falling. Like, yes, it's crazy to get your chair close enough. Otherwise, I'm eight people back, and I, all I see is people's backs, and I judge their belts. I see a lot of belts from behind. Um, there's no electronics. The phone's allowed in, so you can't even check scores. Like, anyway, the practice rounds, though, you can bring a camera. Then I had to go to Walmart, and the guy was like, whoa, because I needed a card. And I was like, I know, right? I'm going to a place where time has stopped. And um, they like it like that. And I think, you know what? If you're going to stop time, then they should have to play with the clubs that were at, available at that time. I want to see wooden drivers. I want to see chippies or whatever all those old clubs were called, nibbies. Um, Your picture? I took a bunch of pictures. Um, I got a lot of shots of Tiger. There's a little limp going on with Tiger. It's not extreme, but I'm saying, I don't know. Augusta on TV doesn't look as hilly as it actually is. Yeah. It is. I walked 10 miles. and Yeah, wow. we walked all the whole way. And um, I was a tired termite at the end. I was a very tired termite. And my pigs were crying. My toe, outer toes, my outer, <laughs> my baby toes were hurting. Yeah, I think there's something going on in my tennis shoes. Um, Ron was very fan friendly, thank God, because it's embarrassing when you're not. Um, and it, it, this, he didn't have on bright pink, which also cuts down on the amount of people that are going to go, hey, who's that guy? And his hair looks like Santa Claus because it's long. And I know, he's, there's somewhere between Santa Claus and Nick Nolte. I'm yeah. like, you have to comb your hair. You look like a crazy person. But um, it was just, you. anybody can go, though. People think it's you, that you have to, you do have to get tickets, but for the real rounds, but the practice rounds, you can go on StubHub. And before Tiger, they were only, and I say only because you're there the whole day. So three, $400, but think about it. You pay 70 for a baseball game and that lasts three hours. You're, you can stay from eight in the morning till six at night. Mm -hmm. The beer is cheap. Once you're in, everything's cheap. The beer's like three, three bucks. Mm -hmm. um, the potato chips are like a dollar. Yep. They have the best egg sandwich sandwich in the world that I've ever eaten in my life. Egg salad sandwich. Um, it's somehow how they whip it. I don't know what they do, but I can't. I can't duplicate that. I even brought one. I even brought one home. No way. Yep. Um, and um, but you just go on StubHub before Tiger announced he was uh, even or when everybody thought there's no way. You know, if that's your bucket list thing, you can do it. Just go. Make sure you get it early um, before. You know, you know if Tiger's playing. That's the key. Because once he says he's playing, all the tickets go. Right. right. Um, I did not see Jack Nicholas. I like to see him. Yeah. From behind, he looks like my dad. Stocky. Yeah, like the square-bodied type guy. Um, he was there, though. I did not see Rory. I saw everybody else. Yeah, I saw Justin Thomas on your pictures. Justin Thomas, Freddie Couples. Um, but, like, Freddie's playing. Yeah. Cameron Smith, the cute little Australian kid with the with the mullet, mm -hmm. rocking a mullet. Anyway, the, and then I got these for my mom. These were a dollar. The Georgia, <laughs> they don't, they do not care about care about calories at all. The salty Georgia peanut caramel cluster. Well, sure, I love it. <laughs> it's going straight to my mom. And then uh, how about the the caramel Georgia pecan chocolate cluster? Yes, I will take one of those. And I've never had their barbecue chips, so I will take their chips are just normal. My mom fancy. No. They're good. Yeah. Yeah. Like as good as the ways. And look, see, they even put their own logo. And then they put up a picture on Instagram of where the rookies have to stay. And you want to talk about trapped in time? There's giant ashtrays on the table. I'm like, do you think these young guys are in there smoking and smoking cigs? Hey, man, who's got a Marlboro Red? Anybody? I mean, talk about not keeping up with the times. I, I would not have posted that picture. I would have been embarrassed. But they did. But the more I talk bad about them, they'll probably none of me and let me back in. No. Well, they won't know if I bought my ticket on stuff. Well, no. <laughs> It's kind of nice to be without your phone for a day, though. It's like time traveling. The whole thing's like time traveling. Um, this is truly the work of the Lord. Those are for my mother, so that's the work of the Lord. Here you go, Mom. But this, I'm sending this whole goddamn thing to my mom. Twinkies now makes cotton candy. I was never a Twinkie person. I'm a ding-dong person. 
<laughs> given the choice, I love the aluminum foil and just opening a dig dong. I'm like, wow, uh, the Twinkies. This is cotton, a cotton candy Twinkie. I'm gonna do it. I don't, oh, eat, I don't like cotton candy either, oh, no. but I'm doing it. Work of the Lord. Mm. Oh. oh my God, no, yeah. no. Well, it kind of tastes like cotton. Not really. It tastes like pink cream filling. It tastes like pink. Just pink. Um, you know, if you're into pink cream filling or Twinkies, bingo, ma'am. They're making your thing now. Oh, God. Chased it with Black Raven beer. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I was going to try this, but I forgot a cracker. I'll try it next week. I found this ranch. On eBay, and it's Heinz, but it's from Australia. Oh, wow. Right. And I want to know if theirs tastes like ours, even though it's Heinz. Um, I'll have to do it next week because I forgot my um, okay. I forgot my cracker. I'll save that one. Okay. And then in other um, termite presents, how adorable is this? The, I, saw, I don't know someone's name, but it came from uh, c- Cocktail Critters. What? Yeah. It's, you know how you have those little ice things? Yeah. And this is for whiskey, but it's the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, cool. It's a whiskey stone. And look, it's got a thing. So you have a suction cup, and then you can just, I, I don't know if it'll float. I doubt it. It's awfully heavy. It's pretty cool. But I love it. You should go to, I mean, I'm not here to advertise everybody, but I thought their shit was cool. Cocktail Critters. Awesome. Just Google Cocktail Critters, yes. Thank you, whoever sent that. And I think it was from Hawaii. It was far away on the package. That's all I remember. That's all I can be expected to remember. Um, and it was a great weekend. Nobody slapped me. Um, <laughs> uh, How the crowds? The crowds were great. Um, smart, 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 and fun. Cool. And it was fun to hang out with my cousin. And um, that's it. So let's get it. Oh, here on the plane, though, just before I forget, then I have Queen News. I watched The Eyes of Tammy Faye on Delta. Oh. I don't know how that movie got by me to begin with because I'm obsessed with like um, biography movies like that. You know, uh, I forget whatever you want to call it. And uh, Jessica Chastain, I guess she won the Academy Award for that. Really? I didn't watch the Academy Awards. I mean, I watched the video of Will Smith slapping Chris Rock like probably 8,500 times. So I think that counts as what. No, I was watching Hulu, The Dropout, and all my other shows. I don't, the Academy Awards are too boring. Either tape them and just fast forward. But. Anyway, the eyes of Tammy Faye was so good. And then Andrew Garfield plays Jim Baker. And if you're a young termite, uh, there was this preacher guy a long time ago and his wife, and they became super popular. And then there was a giant downfall. So it's a rise and a downfall. But they also created this Christian theme park that went out of business called uh, Heritage, the Heritage, I think. I've, I just saw the movie and I can't remember. But I think that could work again. I think Jim and Tammy were on to something. You create a Christian theme park and the whole thing's Christian. Maybe they even exist right now. I don't know because I wouldn't go. But the people that would go, I think it was a good idea. And then it just kind of went, yeah, all kinds of things happened. But what a great hour and a half. And I really felt sorry for Tammy Faye at the end. And then I feel bad for laughing at all those jokes because I don't think she knew. I think Jim knew about where the money was going and who's stealing what. I mean, and she was just naive enough to be sitting around in some palace on a, I mean, it was on a lake. It wasn't like they're in Maui, but, you know, she, did did you ever question where's this money coming from? And, but I don't think she did. She's very childlike, very trusting, very naive, very, um, but it was, uh, it's well worth watching. And I just, I had to write that down. Because I knew I'd forget, because I always forget what I watch on planes. And it, I even picked it up on a connecting flight from, oh. yeah, Nashville to Atlanta, Atlanta uh, Seattle. T- to Seattle. Yeah. Um, and I caught round two, which is sometimes when that timing works out, I feel like a wizard. Yeah, so go Delta. Um, and just if you see it, highly recommend it. Okay. And that lady should have won an award. He did great. Andrew Garfield did great as Pat Robertson, too. So I'm not Pat Robertson. Jim Baker. 
And then the, oh my God, Vincent D'Onofre, he's the law and order guy. He plays Jerry Falwell. Oh. Yeah, it's, he's a little off on the accent. Uh, Jerry was more, had a little more bull, bull, bull going on, but he was great. And the guy who plays Pat Robertson's great. Anyway. Uh, uh, you can watch it on Roku or, or Prime. Oh, it's on Amazon Prime? Yep. Okay, well, there you go, Tom Rice. Or Apple TV. Or Hulu. And then there's other things. Or Hulu. I guess it's on everything. It seems to be on everything, yeah. I don't even know how they make those kind of deals. Like, I can't do that. If I have a special, it's one or the other. Mm-hmm. You're choosing. Do you want Prime? Do you want Netflix? Where do you want? You can't just go, I'm putting it on everything and nobody can stop me. We just need to run the Eastbound and watch Eastbound. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe my yeah, little okay. comedy hoo-ha skit isn't wor- Oscar worthy. <laughs> Probably not. Um Okay, and Queen News, so excited. I will be going to see Stevie for sure on May 11th, Red Rocks. I have no idea how to get up there, but I'll ask my Denver comedian buddies. I think there's some sort of party bus you board, which is totally fine. I will do that. But yay, thank you to my friend Mike who helped me get tickets to that. And then Sunday, uh, well, by the time you hear this, I will have already seen Tanya, 50th anniversary of Delta Dawn, boom, at the Ryman. Sunday Masters night. So, I hope there's not a playoff. I'll, be I'll miss it. I'll have to watch it on my phone. My friend Brian's going. Um, little dwarf. You'll, yeah. You'll miss her. You know. Well, you'll it depends on if she has an opener. No offense to the opener. I know I don't like people, people when do it to my opening acts, but it's the Masters. Well, Hopefully, there won't be a playoff. I'm betting on Cameron Smith, the little Australian. Oh. Yeah. Um, Victor Hovland, the Norwegian happy child. Um, and there's so many guys in the field that cannot win. My brother said it's the easiest major to win, and then Jordan Spieth made a terrible error and said that out loud at the Masters press conference, and I'm sure there'll be a little chat with Mr. Spieth about, uh, no, when you speak about our tournament, what you're going to say, and I'm trying to find my old bastard's joke because people quote it, but I and I remember the joke, but I don't think I ever recorded it, but I think I thought of a secret place I may have recorded it, and I'm going to dig it out so every Masters I can play it, even though Hootie's not there anymore, but the joke, the joke remains true. It doesn't matter who's in charge. It's the same vibe. Right. Um, okay. That's it. Queen News. Yeah, I got nothing. Shaka's running around doing some festivals, but I haven't nailed one down to go see yet. Dolly's icing came out, or Duncan Hines icing. I remember my mom buying that Duncan Hines icing and literally just licking a can. I licked like what was like a peanut can. We gotta go get some. I will try it. Hers is like butter cream, like you know, like the yellow. Yeah. Yeah, good. Nothing better than a grocery store cake. Nothing better than cheap icing. As far as I'm concerned, when I get to a wedding and I see it's a fancy case, a cake, I'm like totally disappointed. <laughs> Just go to Kroger, get a cake. So good. Any grocery store. Anyway. Okay. Update. Oh, Do it. One of my favorite people, Mattress Mac. Oh, no. He bet on Kansas to win the college tournament and he's a big winner. Jim uh, Mattress McVagel has been on a bit of a losing streak with his gigantic sports bet. He lost the Super Bowl because he didn't take the points. But the biggest comeback in the history of college basketball championship game netted him a huge score on Monday night. They erased a 16-point. It was so sad at halftime because, of course, I have to root for Kansas. And even though Lewis is a North Carolina person, there were, like, two Missouri guys on the Kansas team. And it's if Missouri, by default, I'll go to Kansas. Uh, if we're out, yeah, they will be my second choice. Then Iowa. Yeah, my little cluster of of the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Arkansas is dipping a little south. I don't know about that. <laughs> if anything, I'm going to go sideways or north. Um, Kansas erased a 16-point deficit because at halftime, I'm like, I don't like it with the Midwest people. We get to where you're supposed to be. And then we play like complete dog shit and look like we never even were meant to be there. I don't care if we lose. I, I'm used to losing, but I don't I don't want it to be an embarrassing landslide. And by halftime, I've never seen anything that depressing. And then, <laughs> boom, what a turnaround. Um, they erased a 16-point deficit to beat North Carolina 72-69 in New Orleans. Mackinville was able to cash it to, into the tune of about $15 million. Oh, my God. Yep. 
With various bets throughout the NCAA tournament, uh, McInvale had wagered more than $8.8 million on the Jayhawks to win it all. I bet at halftime he was literally shitting in his pants, but not really because he's so rich. But still, you can't, you'd be like, fuck. I mean, come on. Well, no, his wife's going. And then he uses it all as promotion, but we've explained all that, so I'm not going to go into all that. But um, during the NFL and college playoffs, he lost 15, $15.4 million. He bet $9.5 million on the Bengals to beat the Rams, but he didn't take the points. He bet it straight up. If he'd have taken the points, he'd have won. He would have gotten 4.5 oh, points. Man. He also had money on the Patriots and the Titans to go on and win the Super Bowl, but both were eliminated. Oh, I could have told him, don't do that. <laughs> God damn he also bet two point seven million on Alabama to beat Georgia in the college national championship. He bet more than three point five million through the course of the baseball season on the Astros to win. He won three point four six million when the Bucks beat the Chiefs in last year's Super Bowl. Good for you, Jim. Keep it going down there. Yep. You keep that furniture store moving out because he's it's such nice things like he they're promotional. I can won't go into. I've already done it, he's but a nice guy. he seems fun. Yeah. I don't know what his real deal, deal is, but. From what I see, I already I like him. He's a gambler, and if he's doing it on his phone, he has to drive to the Louisiana border to make that bet on DraftKings because I don't <laughs> think it's legal in Texas. Nope. Uh-uh. Update: The Applebee's guy was fired. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne Pankratz, who I believe went to college in Missouri, I'll have to. Oh my God. Which, by the way, Tammy Faye. And Jim Baker ended up in Missouri. Why do we collect all the crazies? Like, I don't know why. Why Jim Baker was down in Branson doing a live after he got out of prison. And then now he's on the Missouri or Arkansas border. And he's selling doomsday shit. Oh, my God. oh, yeah. Like that package space food. And because the apocalypse is going to happen soon, according to Jim. Also, he was selling some cure for COVID and he got in a lot of trouble. Like the, the, the government stepped in and he was selling like silver, something that you, a potion, drinking silver. You just turn blue. Nothing else is going to happen. I've seen that man on Oprah once, the guy who drank the silver. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's where they ended up. Um, and then Tammy Faye died at 65. Very sad. Yeah, I watched the last Larry King interview with her. It was horribly sad. Um, an executive of Applebee's franchise has been fired after suggesting locations pay workers less. Wayne Pankratz said rising gas prices and inflation make people desperate for work so they can be hired at lower wages. What an asshole. Yeah. Ironically, his email concluded, more importantly, have the culture and environment that will attract people. No, you know what attracts people? Money. Right. Money attracts people. Right. <sighs> he said higher gas prices... Yeah, um, so they fired him. Now, see, it's weird because the main company, these are franchised out. So, yeah, I don't know how all that works. Like, it's not a direct employee. You bought into it um, and said they fired him. Now, he's the one looking for a job. He's been fired after his email containing the suggestion was leaked and leaked and roundly roasted online. His now-deleted LinkedIn page listed, listed him as Executive Director of Operations of American Franchise Capital, also known as AFC Brands, which owns dozens of Applebee's and Taco Bell restaurants in the Midwest and on the East Coast. I would have been very sad to have to give up Taco Bell in the Midwest and the East Coast because of this asshole, yeah. but I would have done it till he was gone, and now I don't have to, which is even better. I would have no problem giving up Applebee's. And the quality of Applebee's has gone downhill. I don't know what happened. It used to be fine. Yeah. You could get chicken and broccoli, something healthy at 11 o'clock, yeah. instead of just wings somewhere. Um... Uh, yeah, so they, I don't know how they ended up, they somehow got him fired. He's gone. I don't know what that means. I think you still own him. You bought the franchise, but you're not, he'll crawl back. They always do this crap when they say cancel culture. It's, it's not, it's postponed culture. If there is one at all, I think it's consequence culture, but, um, update. Oh, I love it. You know, I'm obsessed with the super yachts. I'm obsessed because I own a small boat. Uh It is 27 feet long. Mm -hmm. And I know what it costs to deal with that. And boats are constantly breaking way more than cars. Boat gas on a lake. I have no idea about the uh, the ocean. I can't even imagine what it costs. But I'm just fascinated that people have this kind of extra money. It, this is a, boats are the worst investment ever. 
A mysterious $700 million super yacht rumored to be linked to Vladimir Putin is now reportedly under control of a British crew after the Russian crew disappeared. Whoa. $700 million yacht. First, <laughs> this, is how, this is how rudimentary my brain will go. Well, where do you even find tie-up ropes for that? Like, wow. is that going to get Bass Pro? <laughs> Hi, do you, have a, do you have a rope that I can, you know, in case I cruise up to a friend's dock and I want to tie up? I no. mean, no. Every time I go buy boat stuff, it's another $300 on stuff. <laughs> I, I have a tiny boat. Yeah. A British crew reportedly taking control of a bump. Activists said members of the previous crew were employed by Russia's Federal Security Service. It's called the, here we go, Shaharadids. Shaharadades, that's the name of the boat. The captain, who is British, denied that uh, Putin's the owner. Well, how the fuck do you know? Right. 140 me meter long. How long, how many feet is 140 meters? Come on, Canada. Well, I gotta, Paddles. I'm not awake yet. <laughs> Paddles. Um, how many? 140 meters is how many feet? Uh, 460. What? 460 feet? Yep. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. uh. 459. Wow. Mine's 27. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is the dinghy. And it's still crowded when I get the tube in there for the kids. I'm still like, God damn it, I want a bigger boat. And then Ron's like, you have two foot eyes. It doesn't matter how big you had a 23 foot boat. Then you want a 25. Then you got a 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. He's not wrong about that. yes he is wrong though because there's a point where i don't want to drive a gigantic boat right. it's no fun right. it's too much pressure mm -hmm. and you have to be completely sober yep. and i'm in the boat sorry i want to have a beer i don't want to have to worry about how am i getting this thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i was told initially there was mostly a russian crew but after the war broke out the russians had to return to russia either to hide their identity or enlist paolo gonzia an official with the italian union gcil said a british crew then arrived Right, there were 20 of them. That's the job I'm talking about. I would love that. I'll be the cleaning lady. That's fine. I get to live on the yacht, and it hardly ever goes anywhere. Even better. Yeah. It's worth $700 million. It has six floors, two helipads. Million? Uh huh. Six floors, two helipads, a swimming pool, a spa complex, a beauty salon, and according to a video posted by two <laughs> activists who are working with the, oh, that's according to them, working with the imprisoned Putin opponent, Alexei Navani. That's the guy he almost killed. Uh, um, it's directly owned by Putin, one of the guys says. It has a watertight non-disclosure forbidding him to give details. So they're going after the yachts, and every week, that's why it's an update, we're going to get another one. And now here's another one. I'll go through this one quickly to not bore the termites, but um, they detained a different one, a $50 million yacht, before it was supposed to leave London, it, 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 it had docked for a meeting of the Super Yacht Awards. Oh. Well, I would like to see that. And I'd like to see it hosted by, I don't even know, somebody super fun. Maybe Bert Kreischer. Yeah. Yeah, he'd do good at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, side note, speaking of comedians too, I watched Earthquake Special on Netflix. It's so, he's old school. Earthquake, uh -huh. he, he's very old school, but he was like a headliner when I was an opener. And he just kills it. He destroys it. Chappelle made it. Chappelle produced it. Um, really? It's on Netflix. It, it's not politically correct or anything like that. It's, it's, it's old school, but goddamn, Earthquake's just a funny, funny dude. Yep. No matter what he says, and he's smart. So anyway, aside not. Anyway, the Super Yacht Awards. Here's, here's something I would probably think um, if I'm Russian, if I own... Um, a yacht, and I'm Russian right now. How about we not attend the award shows? <laughs> hmm? I think we're in the trouble box. You hmm? 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 He, it went to this. Who knew there were? I'm going to Google the shit out of this on YouTube. Super Yacht Awards? Saying, yes. I just can't. The money, I don't want one. I don't even know that I'd want to go on one, but I am fascinated that people have this much extra money. Yeah. Because this is money where money is never going to be an object. How much does it cost to fill this up with gas? Let's just get to the basics. How much is the anchor? The anchor is probably as big as my boat. They probably don't need anchor. You think it comes with one? <laughs> <laughs> it comes 
<laughs> comes with, yeah, how much do I got to pay all these little soldiers? Tiny soldiers. What do you mean they don't anchor? They just put it in neutral? You can anchor a city. That's why Atlanta sunk. Well, Their anchor was too. The anchor was too heavy. It let, pulled it down. Let that become a super yacht. <laughs> Termites. Does anybody out there have a super yacht? Is there anyone overseas watching this with a super yacht? Or anybody who has worked on a super yacht. <laughs> uh, the five fifty eight point five meter Dutch built yacht named Phi was detained in the Canary Wharf Financial District of London under the government's Russian sanction for the first time. The regulations have been used to detain a ship. It's owned by a Russian businessman that did not name. But that ownership was deliberately hidden. Yeah, that's what they're all doing. With the company, the ship is registered to registered to based in St. Kitts and Nevis. The ship carrying the Maltese flags. I like it too that in modern times, you're still supposed to put your flag on your ship to show... Where, where you're from or where your base is, and nobody even understands that. No, I'm. You know what's what's going to be flying off mine? A cardinal flag. That's right. <laughs> this yacht features a freshwater swimming pool and an infinite wine cellar. It was built by shipbuilders Royal Hoosman. Wow, it's a 38 million pounds super rat turned. Uh, 38 million pounds. It's uh, it's a stark warning. To Putin and his cronies. Yeah, I don't think Putin cares. If you've been watching the news, it doesn't seem to be slowing down. That's update! <laughs> A lot of updates this week. I like it. This is on one of our traitor termites. Because I like to keep track. If you if you invade the capital and start stealing shit, are you going to get in trouble? The answer is yes. yes. Man photographed chugging wine in the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, sentenced to, sentenced to jail time. Chugging I never saw this photo of this man. But, you know, I'm not a traitor termite, and I would not do what was done on January 6th. But if I had to go in, I'd rather be with this guy than the guy who stole the podium. At yeah. least this guy's stealing stuff that I care about. I don't care about a podium or something from Nancy's desk or oh. whomever's, Mitch McConnell's desk. <laughs> a Navy veteran and possible congressional candidate who drank a bottle oh, of wine wow. and stole a book. What are you going to sit down and read a few chapters and sip on wine while there's a riot? Who's slamming wine? On I, judge, I judge you as much for slamming wine as for the invading. For slamming the wine? Yeah. Yeah. Bring the well, you're drinking out. Yeah. At least if you're going to go to a riot and try to steal wine, bring your own glass. God. <laughs> <Bring your own. laughs> Jason Riddle of New Hampshire. He was sentenced to serve 90 days in jail. He pleaded guilty to the theft of government property and legally pr protesting inside the Capitol, both misdemeanors. He was also sentenced to three years of probation and will pay more than $750 in restitution for the stolen book and the damage done to the building during the riot. He was witnessing the violence in front of him while he was chugging wine and celebrating. It's hard to fathom, given Mr. Riddle's foreign military service and time in the Navy Reserves, that he would, quote, celebrate this attack. Yeah. Well, people, people, people get lost. Riddle is the most recent writer accused of stealing something from inside the Capitol. Uh, the last guy was Robert Petros. He was convicted of stealing two microphones off Nancy Pelosi's lectern and was sentenced to, yeah, 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 we went over that. Um, this guy, Jason Riddle, was the, among the second wave of rioters. So you're not even the Marines. You're not even going in first. Nope. You're kind of a chicken shit waiting to see how it goes, and then you'll pull <laughs> back if it goes wrong. Somebody starts yeah. shooting people. You're going to run away and leave the wine. Uh... -huh. uh once inside, he entered the Senate Parliamentary's office and drank a bottle of wine he found. Then he grabbed a red leather book entitled Senate Procedure. Who the fuck would want to read that? <laughs> <laughs> I bet senators no. haven't even read it. No. They probably refer to it like when something goes haywire. Well, isn't there some sort of rule on this? Let me get my Senate Procedure book out. <laughs> a Senate Procedure book. Oh, and a small Fox News football. He stole one of those. There was a Fox News football from the office and left the building. He later sold the book. <laughs> he tossed the football and later sold the book for $40. Somebody paid $40 for the Senate procedure book. After the riot, he told NBC he didn't regret his actions and floated a run for public office, saying that his participation in the riot tells people, I show up. I'm actually going to keep my promises and make changes. 
you know what? Showing up to steal shit isn't really what we all want to be following, sir. No. No. In a speech, he railed against people, including lawmakers and uh, who's they, everybody that participated in the riot were domestic terrorists. If you were in the Capitol, I'm not saying everybody in D.C. that day, not the ones outside, right. but once you became a traitor termite, when you went in a building you weren't yeah. supposed to be in, yeah, everybody knew. <laughs> Do you feel that you were under attack with this prosecution? Um, the judge asked, and then he simply replied, no. Yeah. Yeah. Update! Update. Um, this is bad. This is bad for Mark Zuckerberg, and I love it. Because you know what you don't want to do? Guess who the new people signing up for Facebook are? Um, super turtles. The <laughs> old people. The old turtles. I call old people turtles, and I do it in front of old people, so it's not offensive. And then I call the people over 85 Super turtles. And to see a super turtle golfing, it's like seeing a unicorn. Like, you, totally. I get very excited. I'm very proud of them. And, and and you know what I noticed, too? Just a little note, termites. The super turtles that are golfing are walking. They are not in a cart. True. Yep. That's how they got to be super turtles. Longevity. Longevity. Yep. Um, Facebook paid GOP firm to malign TikTok. Okay, oh, Mark. Boy. Mark. <laughs> If you go after the children's toys, these are not normal, nice children. They will, they will rise up and they will destroy you. You need the children, Mark, on Facebook for Facebook to survive because Facebook is going downhill as far as new, new people signing up because everybody that ever signed up wanted to sign up. And then there's just old people joining where they finally had time during COVID to go, well, how does this, uh, when they had to find out if they wanted to watch shit, the, what the whole family's doing. Mm. Facebook parent company Meta is paying one of the biggest Republican consulting firms in the country to orchestrate a nationwide campaign seeking to turn the public against TikTok. Okay, I have older friends that love TikTok. I do jokes about it in my act. I will not do it on this podcast. You have to go to the show to see it. But it's not really my thing. But I could also see, had I built a feed properly, like my friend Nicole, she likes cooking videos. Uh So boom, boom, boom. They're, you know... It's fat. It's great. But a lot of the people on TikTok are the children. Yeah. And really, at this point, I call anybody under 30 the children. Yeah. And um, I get why they like it. I, I you can't, you're also, it, it, what he's doing is judging them. Like, I guess there was a thing going around called slap a teacher. Oh. But you know what? Like, my nieces wouldn't do that. You're saying that you the kids... Well, they do go to Catholic school. You, well, you could try and slap a teacher once, and then you'd never see that school again. Right. They'd throw you out. Um, the consulting firm Targeted Victory pushed to get the message out that while Meta is currently the punching bag, TikTok is the real threat, especially as a foreign-owned app that is number one in sharing data with teens that are using. Yes, it's a Chinese app, but the children, the children love it. And you know what? You should be nice to the children if you'd like them to cooperate with you. You don't just go, you know what? I'm going to spread terrible stories about TikTok. They don't give a shit what you say about TikTok. They love China. <laughs> the campaign placed op-eds, op-eds. Do you think? And letters to the editor. Guess how much the children care about either one of those? They don't, Zero. They don't know what it is. Seeking, accusing TikTok of being a danger to American children. A danger? They love it. How do you think my nieces learn these dances to entertain me? Because they'll go, Aunt Kathy, you want to see our newest dance? And I'm like, yeah. And they're great. Their dances are great. Um, along with other disparaging, disparaging accusations. Several viral trends, for instance, widely reported as having originated on TikTok, including the Devious Licks Challenge, which encourages students to steal various school items, and the Slap a Teacher Challenge, which encourages students to slap their teachers despite, despite it originated on Facebook. And he's, oh. they got these people, they hired this firm to go say it's all TikTok. And then I think what they're hoping is that the parents go, okay, that's it. Right. And, I mean, and you know yeah. what? Good luck stopping that too. Right. All right, go ahead, take their phone. Their friends yeah. have phones. They're still going to look at TikTok. Right. He, d- <laughs> he doesn't, you're not going to, you're not going to defeat the children, Mark. You're not. No. And you're going to piss them off. And then they're never going to be your friend. And they're never coming to your metaverse. And you're going to sit on your fake beach, under your fake umbrella, with your sunblock 700 all by yourself. That's what's going to happen. 
You won't even have any children in the metaverse that are nice to you. Because I have a lot of fans that are the children. Uh-huh. I also call everybody, every girl I see under the age of 30 at the golf course, it, to me, is named Taylor. And I know their name. <laughs> I know that <laughs> I, there's a girl named Jocelyn. I know her. But there's like three that are named Taylor. So then I just decided, <laughs> fuck it. They're all named Taylor. Um, uh, yeah, so that's what Mark's trying to do. So when you, wow. and, and lying, the, the, the slap of teacher started on Facebook, not TikTok, a public smear campaign. Unacceptable. This is also update. Ah! This, this is unbelievable. <sighs> Meta, the parent company of Facebook provided customer uh, data to hackers who masqueraded as law enforcement officials, according to three people with knowledge of the matter. They provided basic subscriber details, such as our addresses, phone numbers, and IP addresses in mid 2021 in a response to the forge emer- emergency data request. Normally such requests are only provided with a search are, are only pro- normally this information only gets out with a search warrant or a subpoena by a signed judge. They just believed the emails and sent our shit everywhere. This is Apple and Meta. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's very complicated when you read the whole story, but that's that's about mine. That's what happened. Um, speaking of hackers, because I watched, well, I might wait till next week. You know what? I'm going to wait till next week to talk about it. Okay. But I highly recommend um, Trust No One on Netflix. Okay. okay? It's a movie about the Canadian crypto king that, quote, died in India at age 30, and I still don't believe he's dead. But I had listened to the podcast. I think Kelly McFarland, my comedian pal, told me about that one. Kelly told me about another one we're going to talk about, too. But um, go, if you have time, and I'll talk about it next week. Trust no one. It's a movie. It's an hour and a half. You don't have to commit to eight episodes and then get your addiction just squashed by, I'm sorry, you'll have to wait till next Friday. Um, uh, the guy's name is Gerald Cotton. He created a crypto exchange in Canada, like one of the first ones. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't understand crypto, it doesn't matter. Nope. He's been, It's a Ponzi scheme. He stole a shit ton of money, and now he's, quote, dead. And, and then you have to, then it's going to be a rabbit hole, if you're a rabbit hole person, because now I've watched everything you could, about his wife, who's, who's currently living <laughs> yes um and it's super weird because also on i don't i don't know why i got to watch so much this week oh because i was on planes bad, ever. bad vegan ever all the time it's all you guys kept telling me to watch it i watched it i i still don't even know what the fuck i watch like i <laughs> i there were so many unanswered questions yeah. Uh, basic premise, lady opens a restaurant in New York. It's very successful. She's young. Mm-hmm. It's vegan, super healthy. She meets some dude on Twitter. and A, fraud. a fraudster. Yeah. Um, yeah, a trickster, a trickster, if you will. And um, she ends up giving him tons and tons of money, mm-hmm. and everything went broke. Then they, she didn't call it on the run, but they went on the run. Uh-huh. And they end up in Sevierville, which, by the way, is a dry county in Tennessee. Oh. FYI, BYOB. Um, <laughs> they ended up at a Fairfield Inn in, oh. it, by Dollywood on the main drag in Gatlinburg where they were apprehended. Uh, wow. That's the, a lot. It is the most bizarre story. Uh-huh. And when you're done, I'm like, did was she... And he apparently he just gambled all the money, but he had these crazy stories like you know I'm I'm in special ops I can't I can't retrieve any money Can you wire me ten grand and then this lady was doing it and then she took out loans and I don't and he's at Foxwoods where I work the casino where I work I'm like God damn I could have seen the guy had I known and he played he played slots and stuff so he would have been in my area right. you know if you're a baccarat person I'm never going to see you in a casino because I don't yeah I don't wow. it's too Draw fancy back. and I don't play roulette because I can't see the ball wow. you never thought you'd say you're too short for gambling no. uh so I would recommend it bad vegan um but boy does it not make 
any sense. And she should have, I think, had more jail time. So should have he. Because they stole a shitload of money. They didn't steal it. It's always that thing. People gave it to him and then they just pissed it away. Or uh, I don't know. I don't. She lives in Harlem now and she's hoping to open a restaurant again. And I think, you know what? It's like the Anna Delvey thing. You will get your Netflix special. You will get your movie. But let's check in a year later. You you're, you fucked up your whole life. Because then I actually had thoughts during Bad Vegan. Did she do this with the intent of this becoming a story? Because I think there's people that would do that. They see the Anna Delvey thing and go, oh, if I can get all this crazy shit going, even if I get caught, it don't matter. They'll make a movie and then I'm a star. Right. But I... I don't think so with this lady. Anna, who knows? Anna? She's still in the United States, by the way, in case you're wondering. She's not been shipped back to Germany just yet. I check every day on the Google alert to see if Anna is still with us in the United States, and she is. And I've not stopped talking like this to my sister on the phone, and she's not tired of it yet. Now she's talking like this, and now I have the girls doing it, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. My brother, my brothers don't really get it. My sisters, I'm like, hi, it's me, Anna. I'm back from the Northwest. And I have some wonderful potato chips from the Masters. And what did you do this weekend? Huh? Tell me how many sporting events you drove to. A hundred? What do you, where do you live? Because I love that Anna Delby just says the meanest shit, but it always sounds like a question. Where do you live? Like where they make a little house on the prairie or something? Is that where you live? Totally. Are you in the middle of Missouri? Where is that? Like, is that where Daniel Boone is? That's what I think, right? Uh, holy shit, they found it. Oh, God. Moving on. Okay. This is it's this is adorable. Extremely rare wooden Roman figure found is found in Buckinghamshire's ditch. They found this in a ditch. They unearthed an exquisite what? discovery that may have been carved for the gods two thousand years ago. Yeah, it's a little tiny human. It's wow. definitely somebody carved a thing. And a waterlogged ditch in Buckinghamshire has yielded the most unexpected find. And a rare, extremely well-preserved wooden figure dating back to the Roman times. A discovery, the first of its kind in 100 years, was initially dismissed as a piece of degraded wood when it was found in Typhoid during work last July. However, closer analysis has revealed that it bears the shape of a human seemingly dressed in a knee-length tunic tied at the waist. Oh, oh how preppy. Nice. And sporting either a hat or hair. The figure is 26 inches tall. That's pretty tall. It's really tall. Yeah. yeah. Having lost the lower part of its legs, not to mention its arm below the elbow, and it's seven inches wide. They said that the lack of oxygen in the trench in which the figure was found was what prevented it from rotting, and it preserved it for 2,000 years. Excellent. What its exact pur purpose is, uh, is unknown, they believe it's a may have been carved for the gods. Maybe it was a toy. Oh wow! I know. Once we start speculating, it's like well, you could say anything. Um, it's a remarkable, truly, uh, truly remarkable thing. Uh, this is true. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm paraphrasing. Uh, they don't know what it represents. No. Yeah, but it's um, the last such discovery, the Dagenham Idol, which has been dated back to. Uh, the year 2250 BC was recovered from the north bank of the Thames back in 1992. Yeah. So there you go. There's a little tiny wooden thing. See all this shit you can find? Just dig up a ditch. God knows. Dig up a ditch. I know. Do it. The stuff in Missouri and Tennessee would either be Indian stuff or Civil War stuff. I guarantee you there's nothing from the Romans. Mm -mm. No. Holy shit, they found it! <sighs> Archaeologists have uncovered what they believe to be one of Egypt's lost sun temples, Ooh. dating from the mid-25th century BCE. A team uncovered the remains buried beneath another temple at Abu Ghurab, um, around 12 miles south of Cairo. See, okay, I got that. I don't know where Abu Ghurab is, uh, but I know 12 miles south of Cairo. I mean, I've never been there, but I can picture it. Mission, uh, da -da 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 -da. In 1898, archaeologists working the, t the site discovered the Sun Temple of Nyusera, also known as something something, the sixth king. He was the sixth king of the fifth dynasty who ruled Egypt. New discoveries, now discoveries made during the last mission, suggest it was built on top of the remains of another Sun Temple. So they found it underneath the one they'd already found. Got it. See, what's the moral of the story? Keep, Keep digging, digging, kids. Keep 
Keep digging. Oh, my God. I love this story. This is why I like the children. <laughs> and these probably are just all, oh, these probably aren't just children. These are people Maybe. over 30 as well. Apple employees say they'll quit over Tim Cook's return to office push. Apple? <laughs> it's the oh. New York Post and it just says, fuck him. <laughs> Apple's return to office policy is far stricter than other big tech companies, and some employees say they plan to quit in protest. The children aren't coming back. No. That's where these downtown, like every city I go to, the downtowns are suffering greatly, whether because nobody came back to those office things. I'm not going to specifically say which cities, but I think you know who you are. Um, and I don't think the children are going to agree to that shit. They're not going to go to some office building 8 to 5 and pay for parking and pay for lunch. No. No. I just want to do it. I don't want to. Meta, Google, and Amazon are letting at least some employees work remotely forever. But then I wonder, what does that do to all the space you bought? True. Especially Google. You created this whole fantasy compound, you know. Bring your dog, which I'm a big fan of. I think everybody should let everybody bring their dogs to work. But... You know, here's some free beer and kale salads and, you know, you can rollerblade. It's fine. Like, I have never been, I don't give a shit about people's bonuses or whatever extra bullshit. I just want to do my work and get out. Wherever I work, not not in stand-up, but like when I had a day job. I don't need to be there one minute goddamn longer than I'm supposed to be. But I don't social, you know, anyway. Apple CEO Tim Cook is ordering all corporate employees back to the office at least one day per week, beginning on April 11th. That's okay. Yeah. One day. Uh-huh. But then they go, well, can I pick which one? Are you going to make me? I'm busy sometimes on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them. The mandate ratchets up to two days per week on May 2nd and three days on May 23rd. This is a quote from an Apple employee, and I don't know that they're young. I just picture them young because it's all computer stuff. I don't give a single fuck about ever coming back to work here. (laughs) One Apple employee ranted on the corporate message uh, board blind, whatever that corporate, I don't do corporate, I don't know what any of it, saying they plan to resign to the day, resign the day they come back to the office. They're going to come back to quit. (laughs) I'm going to go in and say hello and meet everyone since I haven't, since I haven't, I since I started, and then sending in my resignation when I get home. I already know I won't be able to deal with the commute and sitting around for eight hours. Another Apple employee <laughs> responded with and a laughing emoji. I'm going to do the same. And then somebody else, hell yeah, man, my man, let's do this. A third oh chimed in, fuck RTO. Return to, off, no, return to office. Oh, return to office. Yeah. Good one, Paddles. Uh, Apple employees will be required to go in on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Fridays and Wednesdays will be flexible. (laughs) Employees will also be allowed to work fully remotely for up to four weeks per year. That won't be enough. No. By comparison, Google is requiring many employees to come in three days per week starting this Monday, but unlike unlike Apple, Google is giving some employees the options of switching offices or working fully remotely forever. The offer includes the caveat that employees could take pay cuts if they leave the San Francisco Bay Area or New York City for less less expensive parts of the country. See, no, this is exactly what I say going through the United States of America every goddamn week. I go to crazy places. I go to normal cities. I am out in the suburbs. This is what we need people to do. So outside of the city of Chicago, for instance, there's like a very passionate about because this is the only serious thing I would do as president. We got to spread out. We need to spread out, and we have so much land. Just even driving to Augusta. Once you're out of Atlanta, there's nothing to you can do Augusta, and that's barely there. I mean, there's so much. So they're saying they're going to penalize you for moving outside. Let's say you want to move outside of New York City up to upstate New York, where they need people. Like my friends that live in Oswego, they need people. If there's the children are willing to come and still do their job, let them. 
it's ridiculous to say you have to stay in the city. If you, it's so expensive. If they want to go work somewhere for less expensive, why would you penalize them for that? You shouldn't. I don't think so. And then we, our country becomes more balanced. Like there's more people out in, there's so many little towns, Augusta being one of them, that are there for the taken. Right. But they need people. The, it's, the buildings are great. The architecture is great. I can't remember the one outside of Chicago. It's about an hour and a half. No, not Naperville. Naperville's crowded. It's further out, further out. Um, but like they have main streets. The buildings are great. Upper Peninsula, Michigan, drove through all those old logging towns. They all have a main street. The buildings are great. They're just empty. Yeah. We need the children. We do. God. <laughs> Good job. Um, Meta is also letting employees apply to work from anywhere. Although Meta mates, why do you have to label everything, Mark? Why do you, does everything have to be a thing? He's a nerd. Yeah. But not a good nerd. He's an evil nerd, and we know there's a big difference. My friend Lorreen is a is a, is a is a wizard nerd, a wonderful wizard nerd. She's great. Um, although metamates who may f- may move may face pay cuts. Why? Why are you, why are you going to cut their pay? Makes no sense. Try to control them. You're controlling them to stay. What do you give a shit? Right. And Amazon originally planned to push employees back into the office three days per week, but later reversed that policy, leaving the decision up to individual teams. Several Apple employees said they're jealous of other tech firms' remote work policy and are looking to quit. Totally bombed, looking for into full remote jobs. One Apple employee wrote, another said they were in the final stages of interviewing at several rival tech firms due to Apple's return to office policy. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what Tim Cook had to say. For many of you, I know that returning to the office represents a long-awaited milestone and a positive sign that we can engage more fully with colleagues who play such an important role in our lives. No, Tim, nobody's no. thinking that. No. Nobody's excited. No. Everybody hates and guess who else isn't going to be excited? These people's pets <laughs> that have had them at home now for two and a half years. I'd be like, rrr, rrr, where'd you go? I'm sure the cats will be happy, though. Yeah, why don't you just leave for a while? That's... And then he said, for others... It also may be an unsettling change. No, you're a nerd. He's a nerd. They're all nerds. <laughs> Apple did not respond. I just love it that they're saying no. Good for them. Because it's not logical. It's like when that, oh, was it, what was her name? Meg Whitman in California. From eBay. eBay. But she was talking about something about everybody had to get back to the office. This is even before COVID. Because of, uh, water cooler talk like this is where we have ideas no lady maybe you do but the rest of us don't i'm looking for an egg salad sandwich thanks (laughs) (laughs) great story flamingo a pink one are they all pink i don't know a pink one that escaped from a kansas zoo in 2005 was spotted in texas yeah it's a wonderful story One of two flamingos that escaped from a Kansas zoo during a storm 17 years ago has been spotted off the coast of Texas, wildlife officials said. The Coastal Fisheries Division of Texas Parks and Wildlife confirmed Tuesday to the Associated Press that the African flamingo, known as number 492 because of the number on its leg band, was captured on video shot March 10th by an environmental activist near Port Lavaca, Texas, at Rhodes Point in Cox Bay. Officials were able to make out the bird's leg band on the video. How about we cut the band off him? Yeah. Can somebody catch it and cut the, yeah. yeah. I'm sure he's been flying around for 17 years going, God wow. damn it. The bird and another flamingo escaped from the Sedwick, Sedgwick Zoo, County Zoo in Wichita on a stormy night in June 2005. Employees had not yet clipped the bird's wings to prevent them from flying, which facilitated their escape. While the other flamingo was never seen again, number 492 has been spotted in several times in Wisconsin, Louisiana, and Texas, sometimes with other wild flamingos. So he's getting along just fine, yeah. he or she. It's been a year or two since he was last, the bird was last seen in Texas. They have never made plans to recapture it. Yeah, let him go. He yeah. lucked out. Yeah. It's probably like the Wizard of Oz for him. A storm came <laughs> in Kansas, and then he landed in Wisconsin or Louisiana and went, oh, my God. Awesome. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. The, distinct, the escape flamingos known for their distinctive pig feathers and front legs and necks were born in Africa and then shipped to... God, he started in Africa. I'm sure that was another Wizard of Oz moment. You wake up in Kansas and then a storm comes and you whisk your ass all the way to 
Wisconsin or Texas? Yeah, a lot going on. Uh, <laughs> in 2004, he arrived in Can- he, she arrived in Kansas with 39 other flamingos. Wow. 38 are still prisoners or dead. But one, well, two are out. We don't know the other one's number. Uh, okay, this, this is my spirit animal. <sighs> Paralyzed man communicates first words in months using a brain implant. And guess what his first sentence was? Something about beer. Yeah! Some about beer is exactly right, Petals. Nice. He said, I want a beer. And I feel like I would say the same thing if I hadn't been able to communicate in years. And then you finally can. A completely paralyzed man who was left unable to communicate for several months after losing the ability. um, That's my cousin Mary calling. Um, After losing the ability to even move his eyes has used a brain implant to ask his caregivers for a beer. Composing sentences. I know. Listen to this. So composing sentences at a rate of just one character per minute. Well. I want a beer is a short sentence. I would have just said beer. Beer. Yeah. The man also listened to the band Tool. What? And he wanted it loud and he requested a head massage from his mom and ordered curry. Mm, That's why we part ways. He's 36. This is why we part ways because I hate curry. So he's not truly my spirit animal. He's now 36. He's had two square electrode arrays surgically implanted into his brain to facilitate communication in March 2019 after being left in a locked-in state as a result. Oh, of, he has ALS. Oh. God, that's so young to have yeah, ALS. Uh huh. Yeah, Stephen Hawking had it. He lived 30, 55 years after his diagnosis. So, until now, a brain implant had not been tested on a completely locked-in patient, and it was not known whether communication was even possible for those who had lost all voluntary muscular control. Ours is the first study to achieve communication by someone who has no remaining voluntary movement and hence for whom the BCI is now the sole means of communication. The study answers a long way, long standing question about whether people with complete locked in syndrome who have lost all voluntary muscle control, including movement of the eyes or mouth will also lose the ability of their brain to generate commands. Well, great. He didn't. Right. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's a crazy story, but it's a good story. You know, we're yeah. making progress, making progress. Um, Elon Musk, alien number two, next to Zuckerberg, he has bought a huge share of Twitter. Oh. I love Twitter. Yep. I like it the way it is. I don't mind if we want to try some advanced techniques and make it, but uh, some analysts said Twitter is like beaming your dad's old, Oldsmobile. It's not like Tesla. Twitter could use a product shakeup. Probably. I don't think tons of normal people are on Twitter. Not normal, but it's it's a lot of, I don't know, comedians, bands, news, like the average, just I'm not involved in show business or anything. Like a, I just have a regular job, people. I think more of those people would like Twitter if somebody showed them. Yeah. Like before I ever thought about using Twitter, because I've been on there too, since 2009, I saw my friend had it. And I liked that, like, I could follow, you build your own news feed so I could follow the Cardinals and right. whatever news you want to follow and crazy things from all around the, the world. world. I can read the Irish Times in two seconds or whatever. Um, but I don't, a lot of people, I think, think it's just for, I don't know, people that deal with the general public and I don't necessarily, anyway. Twitter could, Twitter could you, but Elon Musk may be the man. I don't know. My feelings are mixed on that guy. Anyone on Twitter understands the product is like beaming on when he already said that. It was disclosed on Monday that the somewhat unpredictable Musk took a 9.2% stake in Twitter. The stake, valued at close to $3 billion as Twitter as of Twitter's closing price on Friday, is defined as a passive one. Uh-huh. Okay. Shares of Twitter surged 27%. The stock popped up another 7%. As Twitter disclosed, Musk will be joining the company's board. I don't know. What do you think you're going to do to it, Elon? They're caught in a rut, they say. And they could have been innovating at the pace they could. What what else are we going to do? It's a news feed. Right. Some stuff just is what it is. Yeah. There's no more fancy. Mm-hmm. It's like a shovel. It's just a <laughs> shovel. It's not gonna, it doesn't do anything. You got to do it. Here's a shovel. Some stuff is just reaches its maximum thing. Wow. Um, here's some children. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. 
I'm just amazed because I don't think as a group when I was in my teens or 20s, I don't think we did anything like spectacular. We just drank beer and smoked cigs and pot sometimes and listened to REO Speedwagon. Like we didn't really, (laughs) but the children these days, oh my God, tech companies are learning what most of us already know. Teenagers are scary. The city of London police arrested seven teens yesterday, arrested seven teens, meaning seven of them, of teenagers, yesterday in connection with the infamous Lapsus hacking group that has targeted companies like Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Okta over the last year. They tracked down the group's ringleaders, a 16-year-old, a 16-year-old. Wow. <laughs> hey, oh, Mark God. Zuckerberg, be nice to the children. Right. This kid, he's 16 from Oxford, England. He reportedly amassed $14 million. Um, wow. as his after-school hacking job. They're coming for you. London police wouldn't confirm if he was one of the seven arrested. The goals were simple. Hack a company, steal its data, and threaten to leak the data until, data until the company paid up. Oh Early, well, it worked. A bunch of them did it. The kids got $14 million. I'm not encouraging blackmail and stealing. I'm just saying they are capable. Like, I, I wouldn't have known how to do this. Like... I don't know, people my age, we would have to, like, actually rob a bank, which just seems violent, not doable. Um, Earlier this month, Lapsus sold a source code for Samsung's Galaxy devices, and in February, NVIDIA said the group was leaking employee credentials online. Whether it's a highly sophisticated cyber attack or a post-ban rehearsal, um, the loudmouth teens (laughs) always ruin it. They didn't ruin it. They just busted it. It's fixable. Um, this is how they fix. This is where the teens out. This is why they're still teenagers. Authorities discovered lapses because the group routinely bragged about it. <sighs> they bragged on social media. Mm-hmm. And the 16-year-old leader was also doxxed by rival hackers. So the children are attacking the children. <laughs> it's Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Oh, my God. Let me see where we're at. This made me sad. But we need to know sad things, too, termites. Four major major burger chains falling out of favor with customers. Well, this is shocking to me. Number one, Burger King. I love Burger King. Their hamburgers are great. Who's not liking that? Who's mad at Burger King? They've had a long reputation as a close second to McDonald's. I've always thought they were better than McDonald's. But in 2021, they officially lost that title to Wendy's. Well, Wendy's is awfully good, and they have chili. Uh, But McDonald's has the ice cream cone my parents run around and get for $1 soft serve. Yeah. Uh, The pigtail chain, meaning Wendy's, outperformed Burger King in system-wide sales despite a fraction of its size in terms of overall restaurant count. Just about a year prior, Burger King was ranked as the most hated fast food chain in America. Wow, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Wow. <laughs> Number two, this makes me want to cry. Steak and shake. I love steak and shake. It's the best chili in the world. It takes a long time. In the world. It, takes a long time. it does. It takes too long. That's the, steak and shake should go to full on in dining and stop the drive through. Yeah. But that's an old school idea that I don't think is going to float in any meeting that I wouldn't be attending anyway. A legacy brand struggling to find its footing in the current fast food business. Take and Shake had a roller coaster year in 2020, mired in debt. The chain went on to uh, to a store closing spree, right? 13% of its total restaurant count were cut. Things somehow got worse in 2021 when the creditors came calling for $153 million. The chain made headlines when it had to be bailed out by the last minute by its parent company, Big Laurie Holdings. Generally, customers seemed to be dismayed with Steak and Shake's Frustrating wait times and slipping food quality. I don't think the food is slipped. Their yeah. grilled cheese is great. The kids always get it, and then I just take a bite. The yeah. steak bur- hamburger is great. Chili is great. But I don't think it. I don't think it slipped at all. It makes me very sad. Can somebody rich, please go buy steak and shakes, please? <laughs> Thank you. Number three is Burger I M. I don't even know what that is. I don't either. It's a California. Well, I was been in California bazillion times i don't never i don't think i ever saw one and number four is fuddruckers well 
similar to Steak and Shake, Fud Records. They don't even have a drive through though. Yeah, I didn't even know there was They're another legacy burger chain struggling to find an audience in the current fast food market since its founding in 1979. Really? Wow. Fud Records was back then? They've been handed off to one company after another, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, <laughs> the general sentiment from customers seem to be that the chain is forgettable and outdated. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's harsh. That's really harsh without using cuss words. You're just outdated. Bye. You're generally <laughs> forgettable. <laughs> All right. Wow. Here's something. Because um, I'm going to finish with a little... Well, I have my quote to finish. Here's something I'll never be going to. But some of you termites... Do we have any space termites? Space termites. You want to go to space? No. You want to hang out in space? Uh-uh. Well, the world's first space hotel is going to open in 2027 with, quote, activities you can't do on Earth. Wow. Well, you know what? I'm very happy on Earth. Lots of activities. Mm-hmm. Ready for an out-world experience? The cool news is the world's first space hotel is getting ready to open its doors in 2027. Well, it might seem a long time away. Plans for the cruise ship-type hotel? Can, can you imagine? No. I feel trapped enough being on a cruise ship mm-hmm. and where I can see land, but I can't get to it. Imagine I can see Earth, but I can't get to it. Uh, according to Gateway Foundation, the accommodation would float above the Earth's atmosphere. At the time the plans began in 2019, the project was called Von Braun Station. It would comprise of 24 modules connected by elevator shafts to make up a rotating wheel simulating gravity towards the edges. Since the futuristic hotel has been named, since then has been named Voyager Station, is being built by Orbital Assembly corporation uh, then they talk about the creation of it I don't, I don't i'm not an architect i don't care i just want to know what's happening there's going to be a number of different recreation activities and games that will highlight the fact you're able to do things you can't do on earth because of the weightlessness and reduced gravity you'll be able to jump higher jump higher i don't jump no. higher be able to lift things i can lift stuff <laughs> here Here's my Bucky's glass. Boing. Cheers to you, space people. Great. Space termites? Mm-hmm. If there's any space termites out there, you go. Tell us how it was. Right. Take some videos. You'll be able to run in ways that you can on Earth. Well, just running would be something I'm not doing. <laughs> <laughs> the company's former pilot, John Blinkow, told the publication that right now is a significant time for space travel. Oh. Yeah. We're trying to make the public realize that the Golden Age of Space Travel is just around the corner and it's coming. It's coming fast. It's unclear how much the accommodation will be, but it definitely won't be cheap. Yeah, it's not going to be cheap. You know what? I'd rather go on a cruise ship. At least I can still jump off the cruise ship with a life jacket and head for land. Why? This is very... Did you guys watch Vikings on History Channel? Then it was on Netflix. I loved it. I wish there was more, but we ran out of Vikings because eventually they... Uh, you know what? I think the problem with the Vikings was their surprise attack shit didn't work. It, 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 their surprise attack shit didn't work anymore. Right. Everybody had heard of them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. Here comes their boat. Everybody had to develop plans. What are you going to do if the Vikings come? Star. The who? The Vikings. <laughs> um, they had a good, like, seven heart year run, but this is, this, I've wondered this. But then after I wondered it, I was like, I don't care. I just said, but it is interesting. Why did the Vikings abandon Greenland? A study led by the University of Massachusetts Amherst and published recently in Science Advances upends the previously accepted theory on why. So they had a theory wrong. Greenland uh, was settled by by Norwegian and Icelandic explorers during the 10th century AD, where two major Viking settlements emerged until their unexplained abandonment in the 15th century. So they were there for five centuries. Yeah. The first successful settlement of Greenland was by Eric Thorvaldsson, otherwise known as Eric the Red. According to the sagas, the Icelanders had a- exiled Eric during an assembly for the Alt Thing for three years. Assembly of the Alt Thing. For they, aban- they banished him for three years. As punishment for Eric killing, all- killing Eilf the Fall, Eilf the Fall, over a dispute. So he murdered somebody. But every, if you watch Vikings, they all murdered somebody like once a week. Yeah. He went in search of a land that had been reported to lie north, and he reached the coastline of Greenland where he spent three years of his exile exploring the new land. Upon returning to Iceland, 
He is said to have brought with him stories of Greenland, an auspicious name land, in order to sound more appealing than Iceland to lure potential settlers. They they do they go over all this in the Viking show, and I would have been really pissed because I would have bought in on that. Oh, Greenland? Yeah, sure, I'll go. Uh huh. The settlements continued to prosper until the 14th century A.D., where they entered a period of decline until their abandonment in the 15th century A.D. The new consensus view has been has long been that colder temperatures associated with the Little Ice Age helped make the colonies unsustainable. However, new research suggests it wasn't dropping temperatures that helped drive the Norse from the Greenland, but drought. Big difference. Yeah. Was it too cold or was it there no water, no rain? Using ice core data, the team was able to understand how climate had varied close to the Norse farms and sites of habitation. They combined this with sediment samples from a lake near the eastern settlement, mapping a continuous record that dates back 2,000 years. That's amazing they could do that. Nobody has actually studied this location before. Then they analyzed it all, and there was a drought. A second mark. It gets too hard. Uh, this is too hard. Even I can't done this down by... Um, for all the tourists. What resulted, uh, the temperatures around the North Settlements became steadily drier over time, resulting in farmers having to overwinter their livestock on stored fodder. An extended drought top with economic and social pressures would have likely tipped the balance to make settlement on Greenland unsustainable. Oh. Yeah. So that's why it was there and then gone. Yeah. Now yeah. it's time for a quote. <laughs> and then termites. First of all, before I do the quote, where am I going? I wrote it down. Where am I going to see you, termites, on the road? Oh, damn it, I don't want it. Ow, sorry. I love it when people yell sorry. Sorry! (laughs) Um, April. This is where I'll be out on the road, termites. Some of you for the fall days have bought so many tickets. We're adding shows. I'm not saying who just yet, but I'm going to say at least one of those cities starts with a D. Uh April, Kelso Bluffs, Iowa, Horseshoe Casino. Boom. See you there. April 21st, Iowa City. Did I, this is funny about Iowa City. It's the college town. Mm-hmm. And I forgot workout pants one time I went. So I bought them <laughs> and they have the little, um, okay. the little Hawkeye deal on the pants. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, everywhere I would go on there, not everywhere, but occasionally I would be out walking or mm-hmm. like somewhere where there's like a walking path or strand, and I would walk by people, and they go, Hawkeyes! I'm like, <laughs> yeah! But I forgot it was on my pants, because it wasn't that big. It was just like this, but I thought, why are they yelling Iowa shit at me? Like, I, do I look like her from Iowa? What's up? Probably. So Iowa City, I will see you on April 21st. Uh, Des Moines, the 22nd. Kansas City, what, what? Everybody I know is coming to the Kansas City show. It's going to be totally fun. Um, that's the 23rd of April, the 28th, Ridgefield, Connecticut, and the 29th, Wilmington, Delaware. Boom! So that's April, termites. And then May is crazy, June is crazy, and then July, I'm gonna lay down. Oh, I added Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh. This quote is from Catherine Heigl, quoted in Book Book Riot. I don't know what Book Riot is. <laughs> she said, you can do a lot of inner soul work, but I'm a big fan of Zoloft. <laughs> 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 Catherine, I uh, wholeheartedly uh-huh. agree. I think you should do both if you have the time and the money, but if you don't, you know, uh-huh. as my mom says, Western medicine is our friend. Um, Jonathan, Sw- Jonathan Swift, quoted in the Washington Post, Falsehoods fly, and truth comes limping in after it. Oh, wow. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. That's the old saying. What is there? A lie travels faster than the truth or some bullshit. I don't know. The last one is from Dorothy Parker, quoted in the Catholic Star Herald. What's that? Uh-huh. Hollywood is one place on earth where you could die of encouragement. <laughs> ah. All right, termites. Yeah. That's it. Be good, termites. We'll see you on the road. I will see you um, everywhere, everywhere. A lot of time in Iowa this month. (laughs) You know what? Because there's so many famous songs. Springtime in Iowa. (laughs) Right, there aren't any. But that doesn't mean I love you any less, Iowa. Maybe I'll write the song. 
Springtime in Iowa. As the as the corn rises. <sighs> All right. Well, it's planted. It's not rising. Yeah. Anyway, termites, I'm zooming off. All right. Time for another Masters potato chip. I hope you win all your bets if you bet it in the Masters. I'm saying Victor Hoblin, Cameron Smith. Um, those are my things. Okay. One of those two guys. Think so? Yeah. Do you think Tiger will make the cut? I do not think Tiger will make the cut. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. I think his leg's worse than people are. are. People are so hopeful. Because whatever my feelings on the man are or not, he's good for the game of golf. He's a star, and we need stars, especially because some of these young golfers are boring. Um, was it exciting to see him though? It was very exciting to see him, because aside from Jack Nicholas, he's the greatest golfer alive right now in the world. Yeah. And so there's only two True. people yeah. on earth. How many people are on earth? A bazillion? I don't, know. I don't either. Um, yeah, but it was exciting. All right, termites, get yourself a nice barbecue. I forget how much I like barbecue potato chips until you eat one. I see salt and vinegar. I'm already tempted. So. All right, termites, get a Twinkie if you're into it. Not my thing, but see, there was a beautiful ding-dong right on the back. Yep. Mm-hmm. I haven't had one of those since I was 10, but God knows I wouldn't be against it now. <laughs> All right, night-night, termites. <laughs>